Okay, my name is Derek McCormick. I am the Managing Director of Sundial Solar Solutions. We are a specialist renewable energy company. We are uh, the uh, technologies we install are photovoltaics, heat pumps, mechanical ventilation with heat recovery, and solar thermal units. We are based down in Devon, uh, based in Oakhampton. Um, this is our office. Uh, we've got PV, um, wind turbine, although the wind turbine doesn't generate a lot, not as much as PV. Um, why are we here? Uh, we were asked to, if we'd like to install the PV systems onto the demonstration house here to show what can actually be done with the technology, which we agreed to. Um, the installation on this property is a one kilowatt system. As you can see, it's roof, roof mounted. The, the installation is at roughly 35 degrees and facing 240 degrees, so it's about, it's about southwest. And the consequence of that not being perfectly south means you're actually losing, on this installation, 4% of the, of the maximum generation. And the expected generation of the system, which is a one kilowatt system, is 798 kilowatt hours. The income, as we've already gone through, through the, uh, from the feeding tariff, will give this one kilowatt system an income of 346 pounds. The export income, assuming that you're actually going to be exporting half of what you've generated, give you an extra 12 pounds. And the free energy, again, assuming you're using half, will give you 56 pounds per year, providing, assuming that you're paying 14 pence per unit, giving a total of 414 pounds. Now, that installation is based in business. All those calculations are based on the standard assessment procedure, which is the average for the whole of the country. In BISTA, you're going to be getting about 5% more. Now, this is the Garth. Due to the, due to the interest that's been generated by uh, clients and people that are coming into the demonstration house, we're setting up offices in Bicester, hopefully in a couple of weeks. Um, so we're going to be employing uh, surveyors, installers. Uh, we're currently looking for premises and got a couple of contacts this evening and hopefully we can move forward on that because by the end of the month, early November, we want to be up and running. We currently have a couple of installations running through, running through planning permission, and they should be going through in December. This is the installation we did on the community centre, or the uh, Sir John, John Paul II's community centre. This is a 17 kilowatt system, and one of the stipulations we had was that the the installation should not be seen from the from the public highway. So a lot of thought went into the actual installation to get 76 panels on that roof without it being actually being seen from the highway. And you can just see it because we were standing on the box when we took a photograph because we wanted to see it. So the installation process. We, there are a number of different um, programs you can get on the internet to find out how much your... Um, you can actually get on your roof, and Cocoon's a very good system that you can use. We would always insist that you have a site survey done. We will always conduct a site survey. It doesn't cost you anything. We, and during that site survey, we'll check the area to see what you can actually get on your roof. We'll measure the pitch so that we can be able to accurately tell you how much you're going to be generating. And also the orientation. Because as you were saying, the closer you are to south, the better the generation. If you're facing east or west, you'll be losing about 14%, yeah, about 14% of your generation. So if you're east, southeast or southwest, you're only going to be losing about 4%. We will, while we're, or during the uh, site survey, we'll be looking at the structural integrity of the roof. Um, we need to make sure that when we fix the panels down to your roof, the wind isn't actually going to rip them off. 
The weight of a four kilowatt system, which is about 16 panels. Come on in. That's all right. The weight of the uh, installation is, is about the weight of four men on your roof, spread evenly over the roof. So the actual static loading on your roof isn't that great. There's a much greater force with the wind trying to rip them off the roof. So we need to check the, the rafters, the design of your, of the actual roof, the spacings, to make sure that when we do install the system, it's actually going to stay there for 25 years. Uh, we'll also check the electrical connections. Now, we have to ensure that your electrical installation is safe. And all we need to do is just, we just need one spare fuse in your fuse board. Now, if you haven't got one, then we, can, we will put in a small consumer unit, which will have a couple of spare ways in it, and we'll connect to that. And then your PV system will connect into your fuse board. You'll use the electricity that you can in the house before it actually comes into your meter. While we're doing the site survey, we'll, we'll be explaining to you how the system works in more detail than we can do here, and the benefits that you'll be getting from it. Once we've done the site survey, we'll provide you a quotation. Now we'll break down the costs completely, down to its component level, how much the panels cost, how much the inverter costs, the installation, the scaffolding, we will always install a full scaffold because although the panels, the panels are about this size and they're not very heavy, but with a slight breeze, that panel turns into a sail and the guys, when they're on the scaffold, they can get blown off. So we'll always have a full scaffold put up. Um, your quotation will include a predicted generation. Now there's a clause on this, you can't quite read it, but it actually says that the performance of a PV system cannot be guaranteed because of the variability of the sun. But through experience, we know that the predicted generation is going to be pretty close to what you're going to get. We will give you one that is the standard assessment procedure, which is the average for the country. We'll also give you another, which will take into consideration your geographical location i.e. you're in Bicester, so you're going to get another 5% more. Always use the lower figures to do your maths, because then at the end of the year, you're going to be happier. Um, as I said, we'll be, we will be predicting the income as well that you'll be getting, so you can actually work out your maths. Uh, the quotation will also state the payment terms. Uh, we as a company ask for £1,000 with the contract, return of the contract. We will not ask for any other payments until the installation is complete. Now, we are allowed under our consumer protection code to ask for up to 60% prior to installation. We as a company don't do that because we don't think it's right. You should pay for something you haven't got yet. The installation. We had the scaffold erected the day before. We, installations will generally take two days maximum on a house. If it's, um, if it's a concrete roof and the electrical system's pretty easy, then we can do it in a day. Once the, completion, once the installation is complete, we will aim to get the scaffolding removed as soon as possible. Now, hopefully that's the day after. Um, if it's a Friday, we'll probably stay up till the Monday. Um, we try and work with the same scaffolding company all the time so that we have a good working relationship to get it down as quick as possible. But sometimes it'll, uh, they'll wait until it, they've got a job nearby and then just move it on. After the installation, we register your installation with the MCS, and that's an MCS certificate. Um, this is generated, or we register it online, and it is sent directly to your email address or if you haven't got an email address, it will come to us and we'll send it in the post. 
this will, once you receive that certificate, that needs to be sent off to your electricity supplier to, um, along with the forms that they're going to give you. Now, when you decide you're going to go ahead with a PV system, that's the time to ask your companies to send you the feeding tariff forms so that they're there when we co commission and we can just tick some boxes because some of the terminology, it's a little ambiguous and um, some clients are fine with it, some need a bit of help. So we always try and arrange that we're there when, the, when those forms come in. Once you've sent the forms off, you will be asked to give a meter reading every quarter. This gets paid every quarter, just like your electricity bill. You're still going to have an electricity bill coming in every quarter, but they will call you and ask you to actually give them the reading. Now, if it's higher than what they actually say, or if it's higher than what they would expect, then they'll ask you to take a photograph of the meter and send that off. They want to make sure that um, you haven't put on another 10 panels and generate a lot more without actually telling them. Um, so it's just for their, for their benefit. The cost of the installation. These are figures that we did, that we updated last night. The bot bottom two are generally for domestic, for uh, commercial and industrial installations, so I wouldn't bother looking at those. But the higher, the highest you'll be looking at is a four kilowatt system, which is 16 panels. This, Four kilowatt is a threshold for the feeding tariff. If you install over four kilowatts, the rate you get actually drops by about five pence. It's also 26, 26, 26 and a half square meters, so it's a, it's a fair size. So it's generally the maximum that we put on a house. Um, next column gives you the number of panels, how much we would charge to install that system, and that includes the commissioning and the VAT. Oh, and for domestic installations, VAT is rated at 5% for the supply and installation. That's another little thank you from the government. The next, uh, next column, the amount you'll generate, the rate you'll get, which is 43.3 pence. And at the end column, that's the return you'll, you'll get from the amount you've, the payment for the generation, the little bit you've exported, and the free energy as well. Now during our, when we send a quotation, we'll actually break that cost down into its component levels so you know what you've actually, you know exactly what you're earning. So as you can see, the returns on a four kilowatt system, gonna cost 11,000, you're gonna be getting about 1,700. Now this is based on the standard assessment procedure. Um, it's also based on it being a south facing roof at 35 degrees, so it's gonna be the average. In BISTA, you're going to be getting about 5% more than that. Options for payment. There's four, four ways that you can finance this. First of all, you can pay for the whole thing yourself. Um, the advantage of that, you get, every, you get all the feeding tariff, you get the free energy as well. The only disadvantage of that is that you have, you have to spend the money and you also have the, the responsibility for maintaining the system, so if anything should go wrong, it's down to you to, to finance the uh, repairs. Um, you can borrow part of the money. Um, advantage, you're not forking out so much money. Um, the disadvantage, you don't receive as much as the feeding tariff because you're having to pay off the loan until it's paid off, um, and you also have the, the risk of if anything goes wrong. You can lease the system. There are companies that will lease the system to you and it's paid off via the feeding tariff. And then when it's all paid off, it, is a, it goes back to you, to your ownership, and you start getting the feeding, feeding tariff. Um, the responsibility from that is the, or for the actual, for the repairs, that's down to, to yourself as well. So you need to be a little bit careful with that. The last system is the, you can actually grant someone a lease to install a PV system on your roof. Now, that doesn't cost you anything. Um, you get all the free energy, but you don't get any of the feeding tariff. 
And the other advantage of that is that if anything goes wrong, it's down to the people who, who you've actually leased your roof to, uh, commonly known as a renter roof scheme. And that's it from me. Thank you very much. Any questions? If I'm on roof type, yep. you mentioned concrete tile. Yep. That's concrete tile. Um, can you put on thatch? I don't have thatch. No. no. Um, but what about slate? Does that alter the costs a lot in terms of installation? No. We slate, slate costs us more money right. because it takes longer to do. Um, we, with, with slate... UK slate roofs have always been a problem. Um, we've come up with a system by where we actually use a mounting system now, which is about the width of a slate. Um, we take the slates off, the mounting system screws onto your rafters, goes over the bottom slate, and it effectively it replaces that, third, that middle slate, and then the top one will come over the top and make a seal. If there's any possibility that any wind could actually get underneath, then we'll put some flash in or some uh, soakers underneath. I, apart from thatch, I don't know of a roof that we can't actually attach to. There are many, many different systems now. I, I, I asked the question because I went to the Home Improvement Exhibition two years ago yep. and, and Chav, the builder, said it was very quick because so we drilled through your slates and yep. um, we've got a really good mastic. And I yep. said, thank you, I'll go elsewhere. Yeah, that still, that still happens. I was at... Um, we were in Totnes a couple of weeks ago at the uh, Transition Totnes show, and there was an installer showing a film of an installation, and they were drilling through the slates. Mm. I've spent 40, 40, 30 odd years in property maintenance. I won't allow our guys to do it. I think next year it's going to be banned. Um, yeah, no, we don't drill. Another question, if I may. Yeah. The <coughs> reduction of the feed in tariff was predicated on the unit cost of things like panels coming down yeah. in greater competition. That's right. Is, is that happening? And supplementary, if I may, is the efficiency of panels improved? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the cost of panels has dropped by 40% this year since Christmas. Um, when the feeding tariffs started, we were charging about £16,000 to install a 4 kilowatt system. It's now down to about eleven. Um, we're still charging the same to install, but it's the cost of the materials, specifically the panels. Inverters, they're roughly about the same, but the cost of the panels has dropped by 40% this year alone. Um, yeah, so, yeah, it is. And the efficiency question? The efficiency, they're gradually improving. Um, panels that we were getting a year ago, which were 200 watt panels, they're now coming out at 250 that's pushing the limit now of what the efficiency of the cells they can get. There are more efficient panels. The technology is changing all the time. Um, and it's, all the efficiency really means is how big the panel has to be. The, it doesn't have a lot of bearing on what's, what it's going to produce in the whole year. But it, it helps, but it's not a direct correlation between the two. No, no. These these purely produce electricity. No, the solar thermal panels are a completely different construction. Yeah. What's warranty do you get on this equipment, and what's the usual maintenance costs over the twenty-five years? Possibly? Right. The the warranty on the panels are generally there's a guarantee for five years. Some manufacturers will give you a ten-year guarantee. The warranties, manufacturers' warranties, they will state that after 10 years of operation, the panels will still be generating 90% of their generation, right. and after 25 years, they will still be generating 80% of their generation. Now, talking to the panel manufacturers, they would expect the degradation to be at least half that. So after 25 years, you should really still be generating 90% of your generation, but the warranty is for 80 and what's the maintenance cost of the You mentioned that's down to, to you, the householder. Yeah. What kind of figures are we talking about? The one weak point in the whole system is the inverter. Um, it's, it's a piece of electronics, and it will break down at some stage in that 25 years. Now, how, when that will happen, we, we don't know. Um, you can say 15 years. Now, what happens is the capacitors in there... Um, 
they, they become faulty. They, they arc through and they need replacing. <coughs> now, it's not generally swap out and put a new one in, but you send it away and get it repaired. Now, what we do as a company, we'll actually give you one temporarily so you can carry on generating while yours is being away. It's being sent away. Some repairs we can do ourselves, others that go back to the manufacturer and they repair them themselves. You can buy extended warranties on the inverters, which are a couple of hundred pounds a, uh, for every five years. And what I have noticed is that up to 20 years, it costs you a few hundred pounds. To get an extra five years, the cost of the warranty doubles. So to my mind, looking independently, is to say, okay, there's, they're happy that it's going to be okay up to 20 years, but they're not too sure going up to 25. And so far, touch wood, we haven't had to replace one yet. With the price of your installation with the feed and tariff as it is now, yeah. is it going to be cheaper as a percentage of return to buy uh, a system and get it installed before the feed and tariff reduces, or would it be cheaper as a percentage of return to wait till the feed and tariff reduces and get a, a cheaper solar panel as a result? A year ago, I said, a year ago, I said that panels can't, won't be dropping that much. I think they've reached a plateau and they've dropped 40%. So would it be best to wait and try and do a lot of the, the system With the... In March, at the end of March, the feeding tariff is going to drop. Um, it is going to drop quite a bit. Now is an extremely good time to install PV. And whether you go with us or go with another company, now is a good time to do it. In fact, now is the best time to do it. So, be, as a percentage return, it's better to go now with yeah. higher feeding tariff yeah. and pay more for the cars. Yeah. If it was um, if it was May this year, I'd say hold on, hold on until later on in the year, um, but don't hang around now. Now is the probably the best time. You may it, the cost of panels may drop a little bit in a month or two, but you're getting to the time now. You know, we're booking installations for January now. As the feed and tariff is index linked, yep. what date is that index linking applied? Is it at the anniversary or is it on the 1st of April? 1st of April. So as the higher tariff would be index linked, I presume against today's disappointing announcement of 5.2%, yep. actually that's quite a generous tariff and the, mark, the gap mm. is getting bigger. This year, this year the tariff went up by 4.8%. And this year, it looks like it's going to be set for 5.2. So, yeah, I mean, even, even the inflation rate is better than the money you're getting in the bank. And, and the tariff for year three, 1st of April, yep. that will or won't be index linked on installation, not index linked, I suspect. No, no. That okay. will, so that will gap, start off a free. Gap is and getting yep. even bigger. Yeah, okay. it will. Once you're signed on to the, onto the tariff, you'll have that for the whole 25 years, and that will go up every year. Now that, yeah, um, what the tariff is going to be set at, we don't know. Um, it is going to be less than what they originally said, purely because the amount that the panel was dropped, the cost of the, the, the cost of the installation has dropped. You'll notice that the biggest question was the retail price index, but not the other lower. Yeah, it's RPI. It's rated on the, um, the inflation rate is RPI and not CPI. Yeah. But yeah. This is the higher one. Yeah. yeah, this is linked to the RPI, the retail price index. That works in our favour. Yeah. But it's liable to change, isn't it? It will always be linked to the retail price index. The top, the top level, no. Um, but how long they will actually last for, we don't know. If the manufacturer is saying they'll guarantee it to produce 80% in 20 years, yeah. then is that, does that indicate it's a good one? Or? Um, no, that's, a standard in, that's an industry standard. Right um, there are some companies which will give you 
a longer guarantee, give you a 10 year guarantee, and we'll say that after 25 years, you're gonna have 90% generation. And it really is a case of trying to find independent verification as to how good the panels are. We as a company don't trust manufacturers. We always try and look for independent, um, independent information. Um, various studies that are going, one that we often use is one by a German magazine called Photon and they have, I think it's 50 panels in a field and they measure the output every month and they publish those results. And that's available through the net, is it? Yeah, um, you can get past results on the net. Um, if you want the up-to-date information, then you need to subscribe to the magazine. But again, it's a magazine and it, it, it's a tool we can use. Yeah, it was pointed out to me once, well, do the people who are coming top actually advertise in the magazine? I'm like, well, okay, I don't know. Um, if you want free energy, yes. Um, there are different... The only real downside to the rent-a-roof scheme is you're leasing your roof to someone else for 25 years. So that if you come to sell your house, you have to find a buyer who's prepared to buy it with the roof rented to someone else. That's the only downside. But they get the free electricity as well. So there's, it's, it's, it's how you want to... What you actually prefer. Yeah, because I've got like, you know, this bunk, but yeah. I can't use it. It's yeah. not what I do in my daily life. No. I don't read. I'm not a solicitor. I don't no. Really talk, to, talk to the independent advisors. Yeah. Because don't, don't listen to us. We're trying to sell you PV. Talk to, <laughs> talk to the independents, the Energy Saving Trust, the Carbon Trust, um, and then find a supplier that you're happy with. Yep. So that, um, situation, I get asked a lot, um, if you put panels on your house, does it, does it do to the value of the property? Do, do you have any comments? <coughs> I get that a lot. Um, um, yeah, I know, we, we do as well. Um, I don't have any documented evidence of whether it increases or decreases the value of the property. I have read that it will increase the property by about 8%, but what you have to consider is that if your roof is generating an income of a thousand pounds a year for 25 years, that has to add, as far as I'm concerned, that has to add value to the property. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. You said, sorry, just one more. You said yeah. the inverter was the weak link. You yeah. didn't say how much it would cost to repair or replace the... I don't know. Okay, the inverters, a large inverter will cost uh, about 1,100 pounds. Um, that's roughly 10% of the installation cost. When you go down to the smaller installations, yeah, about five, six hundred pounds. Okay. Uh, on the panels themselves, going back to the maintenance, yeah. there is no maintenance, is there? No, if, they're, if you're above, say, 15, 20 degrees, then they should be self-cleaning. Um, yeah, vandalism, they will take a stone, they won't take a brick. I've got one that was broken in transit in the office and it's, it's completely shattered like a windscreen. It's still generating. Um, so it's, yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty stable. They're pretty stable. Hey, thank you.